What's up today, YouTube? It is a blustery day, if you want to call it that, for Florida. It's about 51 degrees. The sun is starting to come out, though, so it might warm up a little bit. Let's hope it doesn't rain, because guess what I didn't bring again? An umbrella. Because <laughs> you don't buy an umbrella. No, I have not yet. I am totally unprepared. So, we are at Islands of Adventure. We decided to come down before we get blocked out for the holiday season. We're going to go get on Hagrid's right now. And uh, we're going to go have a good time. Come hang out with us, guys. It's a pretty chill day here at Universal Islands of Adventure. I'm just waiting for the Hulk. Waiting. Waiting. Still waiting. Still, there you go. Can't wait to ride that. That's honestly. It doesn't feel or look that slow when it's over here. Yeah, honestly, one of the best rides here. But I have not rode Hagrid's yet, so I'm sure that opinion could change in about two hours. <laughs> so, we're going to head through Seuss and then uh, ride into Hagrid's. We're not messing around, we're getting on. We are getting on. So, walking into Seuss Landing, the first thing that catches my eye when we walk to the left. It's green eggs and ham is open. I have never seen green eggs and ham open and I've been coming to this park since 2002. I have never seen that open. That is amazing. I might definitely have to check that out today. <laughs> Hello. Hi. Look at all these colorful trees that they have that look like something straight out of the books. It looks like it came out of the Lorax. Yeah, absolutely. I think you're absolutely right. I think these trees are from the Lorax. Over here at Gertrude McFuzz Fine Feathered Finery is where you would get in line to meet the Grinch. He's inside at a meet and greet. The Grinch is my favorite and I have no shame. Snookers and Snookers Sweet Candy Cookers. That's a fun one. Good. And of course, I would be remiss if I did not show you Mulberry Street gizmos, gadgets, goodies galore. Look at that. That's amazing. The theming here is top notch, guys. There's moose juice. And that's where I got um, my cotton candy that gave me a one minute sugar. Yeah. Cotton candy in here is the size of a small child. They do not mess around. They definitely make some awesome cotton candies. So we're gonna buzz right through Seuss Landing. Look at that, that's huge. We got the cotton candy once a couple of weeks ago and it literally took three of us about an hour to eat it. And we are right here at Mythos Restaurant. It has been voted on by Theme Park Advisor as the best theme park restaurant 
in the world. And right across from the Mythos restaurant is the Imagineer inspired Poseidon. That's right, you guys heard it right. I'm sure you might have heard that most of this land was built by Disney Imagineers. Yeah, absolutely. It was uh, thought up of by uh, Disney Imagineers that left Animal Kingdom when they got salty about the budget being cut and them not being able to build the Beastly Kingdom. They took their ideas and left and came over here and helped build this land over here that now has Poseidon's Fury, Mythos Restaurant. Good stuff. When this place is hopping, the energy is hard to beat. It's a good time over here. Okay, so when you come to Islands of Adventure, do keep in mind to use the Hogwarts Express at Hogsmeade train to take over to Diagon Alley. You do have to have a park hopper. They will not let you on if you don't have a park hopper to get into the other park. Look at the look of this, guys. This is truly stunning. And here you can get a really good shot of how long the track is. It is crazy long. I think I read somewhere that it has seven launches. This looks to be Hagrid's hut. Okay, and then you're doing Star Wars? And check out this view. Can't beat that. So we've reached the remnants of this castle and once again the theming is just about perfect your dragon fight is for emergency Disney-level theming at Universal Islands of Adventure. Crack 
Jacqueline fake fire. Wow. Looks like we have all sorts of different kinds of eggs from different creatures. Hello. Up there is some sort of hive that has been created and it has gems coming out of it. Alright, and we're here at Hagrid's workbench. And you can see his gloves. Look how big those gloves are. He's huge. Looks like we are in the final room before the loading station. All right, we're doing it. All right, guys, we just got off Hagrid's, and I have nothing bad to say whatsoever about that ride. That was absolutely stunning. That was an epic ride from beginning to end. I have nothing bad to say whatsoever. That might be the best coaster in Florida. What do you think? I like it. You like it? There was just so many launches and it was themed great. And the dragon snare. Oh my gosh, the dragon snare. Look at the setup that they have for the butterbeer. They have the butterbeer coming out of one dispenser. And then from the second dispenser, it spits out a like a butterscotch foam that they top it with. That's what's up. No, I'm good. Thank you. Have a good day. Merry Christmas. <laughs> Look at that, guys. Butterbeer. Looking delicious. Looking delicious. All right, Mick. You get the first swig. Oh, what do you think? Yeah? <laughs> Cheers, mate. Oh, snap. That tastes like cream soda. Topped with uh, butterscotch. butterscotch cream, really. <laughs> Definitely good stuff. I like it. I like it a lot. So it looks like they recently put up these cranes over here on the side where they're doing the work for the unannounced Jurassic Ride or Jurassic World Ride. Haven't really got an official announcement on whether they're changing the name of the land to Jurassic World or if they're keeping it Jurassic Park, but they're doing something over there. That's a lovely shot. I think Hogwarts um, should have the celebration dinner like they have in the movie every Christmas or Thanksgiving. That would be amazing if they had the dinner inside of the grand ballroom with all the floating candles and stuff. When they arrive at Hogwarts or when they're having a holiday dinner and they have this grand feast with just a bunch of food out on the table. That would be awesome. Oh, sure, that would be great. Oh my gosh. He's so oh, awesome. <laughs> Watch the snacks, yeah. Go ahead and give her a chin rub, but not on the face. Yeah, there you go. 
All right. That's awesome. Have a good day. You as well, guys. She sounds like my So that little interaction uh, you can sometimes experience when you're walking into Jurassic Park from the Hogsmeade side. And that reminds me a whole heck of a lot like Mary Menagerie and their character puppets over at the Animal Kingdom. Definitely. Here's a cool Jeep with, I don't even know the name of that dinosaur that is looking to be attacking this Jeep. I think it was in the last Jurassic World movie, but I don't know its name. And there's model Michaela displaying to you the grandeur of the Jeep Wrangler. Jurassic Park edition. Alright, so we're getting to a part of the park that I really personally have a problem with. You all know how much of a Marvel and Disney fan I am. And this contract that Universal has with Marvel before Disney bought them is going to become problematic at some point. Because as you know, they do have a... Avengers University opening in California, Paris, and Tokyo. And if you've seen the last episode of the Imagineers, you see at the end of the episode this robot flying around, being swung from cables, and it surely does look like Spider-Man. And from what I understand, that robot is going to be in a Spider-Man skin, and he's just gonna be flying around Avengers University. Now, I don't know what Islands of Adventure plans to do with this area once Avengers University opens, but I don't see how this cartoonish, outdated looking area is gonna be able to match up to anything that Disney does with Marvel at Disneyland, Disneyland Paris, and Tokyo. So we just got off of the Hulk. Great ride as always. That launch is still top notch. All right, so I've never rode this ride, but we're going on the high in the sky sky trolley. And I guess that's like their little version of the people mover. So we're gonna check it out. Great show on the face of the earth or wherever you go. Here in Ring One from the Ocean of All is a sight most amazing, a walrus named Rolf, who can stand on one whisker this wonderful Rolf, on top of five balls, two tennis, three golf. Beaches the best on the beaches. That day all the sneakers forgot about stars. Alright, so that Skyway tram ride was pretty fun but it was super short and it's a little bit more intense very slightly more intense than the people mover but it is fun yeah for sure thank you so tonight is a 15 minute wait to get on the hogs mead express good times Hogwarts Express. What? Here's How about this one? It's not the cabin. Looks like a bunch of fish. Let's be It's really cool. It's really nice. Feels like you're really on the Hogwarts Express. Now you're a great shot, 
Did you really have to do that? Honestly, Ron, they're just sweet. <laughs> So we've made it over to Universal Studios, and there you could see Springfield ahead of us. And this has got to be another little bone of contention with Disney. Now that they bought Fox, they own the rights to The Simpsons. So now Universal has the rights to The Simpsons for theme parks and Marvel. And I just don't see how Disney will continue to allow that. I know that the Springfield and Simpsons rights that Universal has is not as lock tight as the Marvel plans, but I could easily see in a world that we're in today where Disney flat out says, hey, you ain't getting both. You gotta make a choice. You gotta either keep Springfield or Marvel Superhero Island, we're not going to give you both. I thoroughly think that we could see that happen in the future. Looking up ahead across the lagoon, you will see Megatron out there at Transformers, and above that gray building is Rip Ride Rocket. This is Fisherman's Wharf. And the New York, or the London area, I'm sorry. You turn around and they still are running the Phil Factor Live show, which I'm actually surprised that it's made it this long. And where we're headed, Men in Black. So here we are going into Men in Black. Justin Curry, where do you all come from? Mr. MIB wants to be hat with your shirt, your ugly shirt that makes no sense. The mind is the interest that he's being banished to a prison colony, not cruising down the column. So as your newbies can see, we've got more alien bad guys than we could put up with. Had to do things. Man, you guys do not give up, do you? Alright, look, I'll tell you a little something. Something big going on around here. Clear for departure. Here's the weapons cases with all the different MIB weapons that they have to choose from when they go out and do a mission. There's an awesome view and reflection coming off the lake from King's Cross. Look at the effects on the trees. That is so awesome. That's so cool. This area reminds me a whole lot of New York Avenue that was back at MGM Studios back in the day. And I don't know if it ever could be done. It probably couldn't and it probably shouldn't. But wouldn't this be like an awesome location for the Osborne Spectacle of Lights to make a return? That would be awesome. And here is the entry way to the new Born Stuntacular that will be coming in the spring of 2020. This is where they had the Terminator show that closed a couple of years ago. So we're on our way to Diagon Alley, and I would be remiss if I missed the Christmas tree. That's been my thing to show you guys this year. All of the different Christmas trees around the resorts, and that one is really nice. And this is right in front of The Mummy's Revenge. So we just got off Escape from Gringotts, and that's a phenomenal ride. And the queue is also just top notch. I'm still waiting for this dragon to do something. Nothing yet. Diagon Alley 
and Hogsmeade has a completely different feeling than Galaxy's Edge. And I think it's just because of the lights, the Christmas lights. You'd like the walkways to be a little bit bigger for when it's really busy, but other than that, this place is impeccably themed. Still waiting. Nothing yet. Still. Well, that was a huge disappointment. The dragon is supposed to go off and breathe fire every 10 minutes. And we stood there waiting for about 15 and nothing. I think the dragon doesn't feel like performing tonight. All right, guys, so as you can see, it is mad windy. It is cold. It's about 49 degrees and probably colder than that with wind chill. So it's time to go get some food, get bundled up, get some heat on these feet. And for tonight, we're gonna end it here. You guys don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, share the video with your friends. That would be awesome. So as always, you guys have a good night. And don't forget, stay, stay excellent. excellent. Awesome. You guys take it easy. Bye. Bye.